Hey everyone, Chen Henry here, Slingshot Futures Trading Group, SSFTG. Welcome to the video. In this one, we're going to be going over Fibonacci and we're going to be deep diving into what it is and the levels that I use and all of that fun stuff. And when we're looking at Fibonacci, one of the first things that really comes up is, well, what the heck is Fibonacci, right? Uh, what What is Fibonacci? Where does it come from? What does it mean, etc.? cetera? Uh, so Fibonacci, his actual name, just as a side note, is Leonardo Bonacci or Leonardo de, of Pisa or Leonardo Bigallo Pisano. I, I I don't know, I'm not Italian. Uh, but he was an Italian mathematician from the Republic of Pisa, and he was considered one of the most talented Western mathematicians of the Middle Ages. Effectively, going through the Fibonacci sequence, you start off with one and then add one. Now you've got two. If you add two to one, you have three. If you add two to three, you have five. If you add three to five, you have eight. If you add eight to five, you get 13, etc., 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 etc. And it creates this spiral that we all are very, very familiar with the Fibonacci spiral. Obviously, this is absolutely perfect representation. <laughs> um, you know, let me see if I can actually pull it up. There we go. Uh, so we have a, uh, a Fibonacci actual uh, ratio, and, and this is what they're talking about, right? Each one of these is just the other plus the other plus the other plus the other plus the other and it creates this natural curve of what Fibonacci is and, and how it works. Now Fibonacci in and of itself the level or the main level the golden ratio is 61.8%. That's not the only Fibonacci ratio, but that is the primary level. And that effectively, you'll you'll see corresponded through nature, through architecture, through math. I mean, it's everywhere. Uh, it, it's, it, it is what Fibonacci is. It's the 618. That is the lifeblood of, of Fibonacci. Now, again, there are multiple levels beyond it. And in fact, this tool here will show you them all. Uh, we've got the 382, 50%, which is the halfway point. The good old golden 618. 786, 886, and then 100 and 0 are just the top and bottom. The big one being, of course, the 618. Now, there are the other levels inside of here, and the most common ones that I use are the 618 and the 382. Uh, those are my preference between them. It's either more aggressive or less aggressive, but generally still looking for trend continuation. And the idea here, and, and why I use them in that way, is looking to categorize what kind of trend we have. If we go from the top to the bottom, generally speaking, aggressive traders are going to be looking to maintain strength off of the 382. Now, sometimes they'll fall ahead of it, and that would be in the 21% range. That's a different Fibonacci level, but the main one, 382, they come back, they hold it. We see beautiful resistance there. The market rejects all the way back to the downside. Now, when the 382 starts to break, that's usually when the 618 starts coming into play, and that's the big Mac Daddy of them all. It doesn't mean that it has to hold, but generally speaking, that is what we're looking for in this. And here we can see when it comes close to the 618, it's just resistance, resistance, resistance until it finally breaks through that area. Now, the 618 and these levels in and of themselves are some of the most useful areas when you're creating, and one of my favorite uses for, for Fibonacci, is designing strategies and creating strategies around them. Fibonacci allows us to measure the market in a way that we can understand uh, what to expect next. A 618 generally has a response. It is the golden ratio after all. So if you can figure out a trade plan around a 618, then you're already putting the edge in your favor just based in math. So it's very easy to design strategies around them. That's one of the beautiful things about them. Now, the other thing is that we see it in human nature. If I were to point out a line and I were to say, hey, in this line, and you can't pick halfway, put a line on it, right? You'll very likely, almost always, pick 618 or 382, right? One of the variables. But it's just human nature. It's built into us. So when we see this kind of movement, these deeper pullbacks or these zones of interest, generally speaking, our eyeballs will naturally start believing the value that occurs around the 618 because it's just how human nature works. It's in nature everywhere, including how our brains operate. But the other thing about them is that they're repetitive and they're consistent. You can very frequently, with a strong bull trend to the upside, anticipate a 382 or 618 to be holding. And if you start getting those deeper pullbacks, the 618 is usually where you'll start seeing that responsiveness step in. Again, it's that repetition. But that's really the, the kind of understanding of Fibonacci and how it, and how it works. 
It's just going in and, and really digging into what the market is doing at any given time. And, and again, I use them in more of a structural perspective. I like using them to gauge what the market's doing. Is it more aggressive or is it a little bit of a deeper pullback? If the market's holding a 382, we're probably going to break above the highs. It's a very shallow pullback. But if we're holding a 618, we have, they might break above the highs, but they might have a little bit more of a difficult time because it was a deeper pullback. It's a way that we can gauge context of the underlying market. Very, very useful. Along with Fibonacci, you can utilize it with moving averages for uh, settings in indicators, all kinds of stuff. The, the, the amount of uses are endless. It's insane. Um, definitely something that I encourage everybody to play around with at least a little bit to get your fingers, uh, you know, in the Fibonacci realm. There's a lot of useful characteristics when it comes to Fibonacci, but the thing is, there's a ton of them. It's very easy to get overwhelmed when there's that many different variables. So what I would encourage, usually when you're looking at Fibonacci or anything new, is to pick one of your favorites and then stick with that one for a little while until you truly, really understand the ins and outs of how that operates. If that happens to be a 382, then so be it. It'll be a 382. If it's a 618, then so be it. It'll be a 618. But focus on one of these areas first and just go through the market and see how does it ebb and flow off of these areas. It's insane how often the market bounces off these FIB levels. It's crazy. But anyway, that's going to be how I utilize FIBs, the main levels of FIBs, and, and just generally what it is. Of course, if you have any questions, you can always drop them in the comments below. Or if it's a more detailed question, you can shoot me an email, jhb at ssftg.com. Until the next one, enjoy, rest up, and we will see you all then. Thanks.